Hey, what's up guys, Pablo Munoz here. Welcome to a new tutorial. Today I'm gonna to show you how to sculpt details in a model like the one that you see here on the screen. And I'm gonna be using a brand new set of resources or brushes that I created for ZBrush to create this type of uh, surface detail. So I'm gonna cover how I set things up, how I block things up, and then we're gonna jump into the detailing process. So let's jump straight into it. All right, so let's go ahead and jump straight into this time-lapse where I'm gonna show you how to block in the head of the character um, that we're gonna detail later on. So I usually start with primitives, and in this case, with just a sphere, and I like to start with the eyes. That gives me kind of like a, an anchor point for, um, you know, place the rest of the things on this creature. So again, just with like simple spheres, I use a Siri Measure constantly to keep a clean surface. It doesn't have to be the final surface at all or the final mesh. It's just something that I use to, or, or like a tool that I use in ZBrush to keep things clean and being able to subdivide it later on. So again, you can use normal primitives like uh, spheres or you can use insert brushes that comes with, with spheres or other type of uh, objects to block things out. Uh, but I think the key when it comes to a project like this, uh, especially with insects that, you know, it sort of like has different different panels and, and moving pieces is to keep everything simple with lots of different sub tools. So um, for every new section of the head, I will create a new sub tool. And also you can use things like the formers from the Gizmo 3D, like in the case of the jaws out of this creature uh, to again, deform things slightly just to give you an idea of where to place the details later on. and further sculpt the head. So yeah, I, I use a, a bunch of different tools, but the idea is to keep every bead separate. So on that note, if you use something like the curved tube brushes that I use uh, here around the, the eye area as well, uh, you can just draw that and then split it so that it becomes its own sub tool. And if you work on one side, the easiest thing would be to just uh, mirror and weld it. Uh, but again, just to, to reiterate, the idea is to keep everything in separate subtools so that it makes it a lot easier to work with the different areas uh, once we get to the, to the detailing process. Once you have placed the, the main shapes, again, without too much sculpting, I personally like to go with the Move Topological or the Move Brush and the AccuCurve Enable. That's the tool that creates that very pointy or spiky way of moving things around. And that way you can create more feature pieces and kind of like integrate all those panels or all those extra subtools together. So yeah, there's not much to it. It's really just go over all the basic block out that you created with um, you know primitives or, or curve to brushes and things like that. And with the move brush and the smooth brush as well, just literally push things around so that it feels more integrated. Now towards the end, I just add a couple more spheres uh, to create the antenna. Um, and obviously the antenna is a lot easier. You just do uh, something like the curve tube brush. Uh, and in the modifiers, I just uh, lock this start so that I can manipulate it a little bit more. And yeah, at the end, I just use the smooth brush and the move brush as well, the move topological to create uh, a more interesting shape for the antennas. Um, and the little panels, they're not gonna be too visible in the render that I'm hoping to have from this guy, uh, but I just use the masking brushes, uh, in this case, the masking lasso, so sort of protect areas and then using things like the inflate and the and the move brush, um, give it that iconic shape of these antennas. But that's about it. This is the blocking and this is what you can also get in the resources of this tutorial. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you go to the link in the description to the ZBrush Guides website where you can download it um, as an FBX file and you can import it. And yeah, you can just follow along with the next part of the tutorial that covers the detailing and the showcase of the insect brushes. All right, and here we are inside ZBrush, and this is where we left off based on that time lapse where I cover how to basically set up this uh, this creature. So again, this is just a made up insect. I just have a bunch of references on my screen. Let me just bring them so you can see. I'm gonna put a link as well to a Pinterest board that I have called Insects, where you can you know grab pretty much all of these ones as well. I use a bunch of different references to to create this, which is a made up insect. So it has a bit of a wasp head and these claws from. Uh, maybe like an ant, a grasshopper, eyes, I guess. But we're ready to start sculpting and adding details to it. I just want to mention uh, one thing that aside from the base uh, primary shapes, it is also uh, important to go through the secondary shapes and have some volumes there before you go into details. Because the details that I'm going to show you are really, really easy, but they're not going to fix a bad model. So it's important to have at least something in there, something going. All right, so let's jump straight into the actual tutorial. Just want to mention as well that every single piece that you see here, let me go into solo mode, you see I have everything split into different parts and that's just purely so that I can um, work with a lot more resolution. So for example, if I select this bit here, this panel, 
Um, this one is 2.1 million polygons, um, and all of the subtools they add up to 10 million polygons, right? So I'm not interested in optimizing or anything like that at this point. That's a different process. But yeah, this is what I have, and this is ready to to start sculpting. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the lightbox. And here we go. So these are the brushes from the insect detailing or insect close-up uh, pack of brushes. And I created them with ZBrush 2022.0.5. So they would work with any version of ZBrush that is 2022 or higher. Um, okay, so I'm going to show you the, the basics first. So you'll see there's a general good noise. There is an uneven surface. There's these tiny growths. There are a couple more noises like this complex noise control and the basic noise and also this nice surface prep. So basically, these brushes that I just mentioned are noise uh, brushes, uh, but they're really, really cool because they allow you to break the surface a little bit before you add any of the stronger details that you have in the other brushes. So I'm going to start with a nice surface prep. And I'm just going to get closer here. And with a larger brush, I'm just going to go over this. And you'll see already we have a nice, interesting pattern. Uh, and again, this is just a way of preparing the surface. I'm also adding a bit of extra pressure just so that you can see the effect. But obviously, you can uh, fine tune how much of the effect is visible by just pressing harder or, or softer. All right, so if I go into solo mode, I'm going to show you the main brush that complements this brush pack, which is a brush that comes with ZBrush, and it's called the Smooth Pick. So I'm going to click on the brush palette. I'm going to filter by the letter uh, S, this one right here. So Smooth Picks. This one comes with ZBrush, but it's a fantastic tool that smooths most of the surface while keeping some of the crevices, right? So it respects the, uh, the dents or the, or the holes or the crevices. So I'm going to go ahead and press the Shift key. and smooth this area. And I'm just pressing relatively hard now. As soon as we start smoothing after using this noise brush, we get all this nice, you know, surface that we can start adding more details on top of it. So let me undo that because I just use the default settings of the smooth picks. And I just want to show you a very simple thing that you can do so you have more control over how you smooth the details. So I'm going to go ahead and right click to bring in this palette. And this is palette, you can also bring it with the space bar. And if you don't have access to this, or for some reason, you cannot bring it up. What I'm going to change is here from the draw size, and it will be the intensity. Okay. So again, right click, and here on the intensity, right now, I have the surface noise. And you see, it's only three. Um, so you can change that as well. But what I'm going to do is while I hold the Shift key, I can access that smooth peaks, right? So again, right click, hold Shift, and take the intensity down to something like 55 is fine. So that way, you have more control with the tablet just to, um, to add pressure. So let me just go through this really quickly and soften this up. All right, so that's pretty good. We have something going already. Let's go ahead and bring in another noise. I'm just going to show you different noises. I'm not going to look for a particular design just yet. I just want to show you the, the brushes. I select this guy here, this part. And again, I'm just going to press. And this one gives me all these sort of extra uh, wiggly lines. Let's go into solo mode. And obviously, the, the harder that I press, if I press really hard, those bumps are going to be more visible. Let's undo that. So this is something that I would use, let's say, in this sort of um, bumps or these protrusions in here, just to make them a little bit larger. And that way, uh, we can differentiate it with the rest of the noise. Because like I said, adding noise and adding details, especially with these brushes, is something that is very, very easy. And that also can become like a, a double-edged sword, <laughs> because you end up with areas that are really, really noisy or really, really detailed, and then you don't have a, a good balance between the forms. So just pay attention to that. So that's why every time that I add something or a new set of details, I go with these smooth pick brushes and smooth things out as well. So you see, in just a few seconds, we have uh, these two pieces that are uh, relatively detailed, or at least we have the surface noise going before we go with more interesting details to create like the feature pieces. Let's go ahead and bring in another noise. So I'm going to go with this uneven surface. This one is not necessarily a noise, because as far as noise brushes go, this one is pretty generic, right? So if I do something like this, this is like, you know, pretty boring. It's just a, a normal noise. So the way that this one was intended to work is with very large brushes. And that's what is called the uneven surface. So if I make this a large brush, let's go here, and then just apply it. Just I don't know if you saw that, but let me undo that. With a large brush again, I'm just going to press like so. This is really, really hard. But you see how it breaks the surface a little bit. So I'm going to press this softly. And this is something that could go after you add the noise, right? And it just makes it 
a little bit more um, organic and natural. You can do the same thing here and then go again with a smooth brush. Right, so I can do the same thing in an area like this and then go ahead and smooth that out. And I'm pressing a lot harder now. So you have, um, you have a, a good variety of noises that obviously will change depending on how you use them, um, how hard you apply them or how big the brush is, but there's a good range. Um, there is this basic noise. This is very similar to the one that I just showed you. The difference is that it's not as strong, um, so it doesn't deform the surface as much. So this one is a cool one. Maybe not for this part. Maybe let's go ahead here, here at the back. This is a, a good general noise, um, and it has a, a slight pattern. Let me just do it a bit harder so you can see it. It has this pattern that I found it to be useful for this type of insect surfaces, uh, that once you use it in combination with the smooth peaks, like I said, it looks pretty cool. So I think we might actually go back because we need more resolution. So I'm going to subdivide this one more time. So this piece now has 3 million polygons. There you go. So something like this, but then pay attention to what's going to happen with the surface once I add these smooth peaks. That pattern is going to uh, be less evident, and we're going to end up with those really nice tiny bumps around here uh, for free, <laughs> because uh, this is just the result of smoothing the peaks, as the brush name says. We're smoothing the surface that are kind of like higher, and then the brush is respecting those dimples or those areas. But yeah, you can see, you can do it like really, really strong. And then we will start to get even, you know, cleaner surface with these details. But I'm going to go back to this just in a second, because I'm going to add more noise or more details, and then we'll still um, need to smooth that out. But anyway, you have lots of different noise brushes there. Now, let me just show you a few more that are more featured or create more featured details. So this one is one of my favorite. It's called the Crater Dimples. And that's, you know, it's a, it creates this very cool pattern that you can probably use in some areas like this. I'm just going to go ahead, maybe with a smaller brush size, actually, and do this. And obviously, the harder that you press, the more craters that you'll find, or the stronger the effect. But you can just press softly and then create smaller dimples like that. You have the ability to also direct the flow of the details. So I'm just going to create some smaller surface noise like this, maybe around this area. Again, I'm just making this up. I'll probably go back and, and do it a little bit more thoroughly than this, but I just want to give you a sense of where and, and how to use these brushes. OK, so that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and also use the smooth brush now, maybe with a larger brush size. Let's get closer here. And we end up with this like really cool sort of almost membrane pattern once you smooth uh, the peaks out. And if you use, you know, lots of references, you can sort of follow where to place these details or where they should be. Um, but yeah, already has, it has a very interesting look. Now we can go ahead and also use this brush to add some details around this area, just so that we can integrate it a little bit more. Maybe here in the center with like larger pores. Um, a little tip that I can give you as well is that if you work with symmetry like I'm doing right now, as soon as you get closer to the center line, it's going to be very evident that you're using symmetry. So I would recommend just going on the sides first, like so, then just, you know, go through the process of smoothing things out a bit, um, and then toggling off symmetry just when you get to the center line, and that way um, it will look uh, that it has less symmetry. All right, so that's not too bad. Let me just show you a couple more brushes that are really cool. So the next one I'm going to show you is going to be these sharp lines first. And these ones are, like the name says, it just creates some sharp lines like that, right? But you have the ability to sort of like direct those, um, those lines. So it's going to start with these areas right here. Again, I'm using uh, a few references on my other monitor to kind of like see where these ones are usually placed. So it creates these, yeah, these nice lines, uh, which is another, I would say it's another noise, a different type of noise. But at least it gives you something to, to start with. Um, and remember, every time that I do something strong with these brushes, I also use the smooth picks, um, which is my default smooth brush at this point. All right, I'm going to bring in another one that is also really cool, uh, which is called, um, here we go, this crackle one. So this crackle one has a similar effect. Let me show you here in an empty area or clean area. It has a similar effect, but the lines are not even. So they get um, you get all these nice extra details that once you smooth this out, you can sort of um, capitalize on and just extract um, extra tiny secondary forms. So let's do that around here with a smaller brush size. And I'm just going to direct these lines towards these uh, teeth here, or these, yeah, these bumps. 
very quickly and then use the smooth brush again to soften those peaks um, and that's what creates in my opinion the best effect with these brushes i can keep going like this and then smoothing this out and of course after we can go back and manually fix or add or reinforce some of these details but generally speaking this is the process all right so let's go ahead and use the same brush maybe here to add some extra level of details probably need to um, add more resolution as well in here so we have 1.5 million now and the cool thing about this brush as well is that or any brush for that matter in this pack it sort of have this directionality so you can just go through and follow the flow of your sculpt so that's what i'm doing here i'm trying to go around the eye and make sure that everything sort of fits part of the same because obviously we have panels everywhere. All right, let me just show you a couple more brushes that are really cool. Another one of my favorite is this stretchy line pinch. So let me show you in the eye just to give you an idea what it does. Uh, we probably need a lot more resolution than that. So 1.4, there we go. So it basically creates a line like this, uh, but it sort of feels like it's pinching the surface. So this is a pattern or a type of detail that I found in a few close-ups of insects in the reference when I was building this type of brushes. And I find it useful for defining ridges, like for example, in here, if I go with a larger brush, I go on top here and that creates that sort of sharper line that is not perfect, is not the usual standard brush line. And that's what I, what I like about it. And of course, depending on how, how much you press on the surface, uh, it creates larger or smaller details. And of course we go with the um, smooth peaks brush and change it. Um, it could also be a, a helpful one if you want to sort of delineate a bit more the, the difference between panels or the difference between the subtools. Um, perhaps maybe around here, if I think that maybe this is too smooth, press hard towards the edge um, and it's going to pinch or it looks like it's pinching that surface and that, um, that helps to define the edges of these panels a lot more uh, while also giving you some nice details um, that you can, again, you can just go back and manually edit or add more to it. So let's do the same thing around here. So it's starting to look a lot nicer, uh, the, the intersections between these panels. Um, all right, so we want to debug as well. I don't want to overdo it, plus I want to show you more details um, or different brushes. So let's leave this one there. Uh, let's bring something else. Let's go for uh, this one. This is really, really cool, this pinch noise net. Uh, there's a similar one that is more controlled. This one right here, this simple net. So this is basically the same pattern, just different settings. So let me show you what this one does. Uh, again, we can do it here. So it just creates a nice pattern, uh, like a nice membrane pattern. And you can, you can use it anywhere, go like that. And then once you smooth it, it's gonna look a lot better than this. But uh, anyway, this is just the basic pattern, but I wanna show you this one because I think that would go really well in this area. So I'm gonna select this. I'm going to try to follow these, these lines, like so. Maybe more around here. There we go. Um, and again, we can go with uh, the Smooth Peaks brush. And that's the one that is going to make all these details a lot more subtle. And that's the reason why I didn't uh, spend too much time smoothing these areas beforehand. Because every time that I add more details or another pattern on top of it and smooth it, it's going to smooth things out even further. So. Yeah, I think this is looking pretty good. Um, but yeah, that's that brush. Uh, there's some other ones that are really, really cool, like this uh, wiggly pattern. There's three like this. So this super wiggly pattern. So this is really strong and, you know, the lines are a lot more <laughs> wiggly. This one is uh, kind of like a standard one. And there's this one, this labyrinth skin that provides a similar effect. This one is really cool. I'll show you this one first. Let's say in an area like this, you can go ahead and apply it. And it doesn't look like much. It's just like a pattern that's being rolled over. And you can do it like this, right? So that's cool. But the, the real cool way of applying this brush is by pressing and don't letting go of the click until you finish. So if I start around here and then I come back over the same area, you'll see it doesn't destroy things. It just add, adds the effect on top, basically. So it creates this really interesting pattern once you go over the same areas. Right, um, and this looks very alien-like. Uh, but if you look some of the insects close-ups, you'll see that the patterns are are crazy. So this is kind of like the the pattern that I just showed you uh, previously. 
that you can create this sort of net. Um, that's really, really cool. The, the one that I'm doing at the moment, um, this sort of wiggly line, is similar to what ants have. So look at the, the close-up here. Hopefully it's not too... Yeah, it's a bit blurry, but you can all see the patterns. Um, not this one, though. Now I cannot find it. Anyway, so this is the type of patterns that, um, that we produce, and then you can obviously soften that up even further just using the smooth peaks. Uh, let me just show you the wiggly pattern, because that's the one that I did based on those ants. So this is the pattern. I'm just pressing it really, really hard. Uh, but that's sort of like going for this type of pattern. Um, and you see this section right here, it sort of like goes from top right to bottom left, whereas these ones go from uh, top left to bottom right. And the fact that you can determine the direction of these patterns, that's what um, I was looking for. So basically you can go like this. I'm going to do this really quickly, right? And in this other section, you can go the other way around. So that creates that nice balance. And uh, that's not too bad, actually. Select this one and let's undo a few. So yeah, if you want to do something like that, I'm just going to decrease the brush size and just press like a bit softer. And just like that, you have this really nice sort of pattern. Uh, again, this is just the beginning of the process. So then I can go with the smooth picks. And that's what makes this whole uh, workflow worth it uh, with these brushes, I think. So you can just tone them down a bit. And, you know, as you do so, uh, you kind of like manage to, um, to blend the pattern a little bit more. So it's not that obvious that it's the same brush. The other thing is you have to be careful not to use all of the brushes. Um, of course, you can if you want to, but the idea is to, uh, to mix the ones that make sense. So I'm just trying to mash them all up into one concept, but um, I would probably won't use the same brushes in the same panel. So what I just did is I'm trying to make it work, but it's probably not a real thing. <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't matter since this is just a, a made up creature anyway. So yeah, those are the, the nice uh, patterns. Uh, there are other ones as well, like these textured white lines, these textured sharp lines. Um, and I already covered this one. So these two basically add a lines like so. Do it again here. So you just create these subtle lines as you go back and forth. Um, and this would be really cool for areas that, you know, could be false in a way. So let's take this one, for example, although it's a little bit detailed already. Let's take this one. Add more resolution as well. So it's another way of add surface noise or details, but in a very specific way. And then we can smooth that out. And you'll see there is this uh, a nice pattern um, that could be read as falls or, or, or wrinkles. Uh, you can use it as well with a large brush. As, so if you select, say, this guy here, um, maybe go without the symmetry and then just do that in the front, we can get these nice, um, again, falls or uh, indications or wrinkles in a way, even though this section or insects don't have wrinkles necessarily. But, you know, this is a, a way of achieving a similar effect. So let me just show you why I built this brush as well. Um, I have it here well, in the resources or the references that I'm using. Uh, so something like this, you know, this type of lines and patterns that you see here, or even these ones that are a bit more horizontal. Uh, that's not best. Yeah, but something like that. Um, hopefully you know what I mean. Um, this is another really interesting pattern and um, you can achieve something like this with um, this brush that I use. At the back, the labyrinth skin, just with, you know, a bit, um, you just need to press a little bit harder or just create an effect that is a little bit stronger. Um, all right, so let's do a couple more. Um, I won't have enough time to cover everything, uh, but, you know, the, the idea is for you to explore. I just want to cover the, the main ones so that um, when you are playing around with this, you know how to use them. So let's go with the complex noise. This is uh, a really cool brush that I created for specific areas, uh, mainly the intersection of the panel. So I want to press the, I want to press a little bit hard this time. And it creates this bumpy, noisy surface with crevices that you can also use with, um, with the embedded effect. So let me undo that. And if I press the Alt key or just switch between Z up to Z add, it gives me the same effect, but it's just pushing that pattern out. So you can use it to refine certain areas, let's say like here, to create a bit more of a bumpy surface and then just smooth that out if you want to, or go to certain areas um, and then just press harder to achieve that these sort of craters that I think they're really cool. So um, I like to use this towards the edges. I found that it works best. 
and it breaks that that symmetry as well. So it's a good way to um, to break the patterns or the leanness of the pattern. But yeah, you can use it in any way you want. Maybe something here. And of course, if you press really hard when you're softening this or smoothing this uh, with the smooth peaks, it creates some big chunky craters and bumps uh, or dimples rather than bumps. So again, this could be more of a, of a feature piece or when you're detailing a feature piece that you need a specific patterns like this. Um, so this one is a really good one. Um, I is one of my favorites of this pack as well. And you can use it with the Ziad and C sub. Uh, another really cool one, we have this Denti Capillary and just made that name up, doesn't mean anything. Um, and we also have this one right here, the Thick Bumpy Pore. So these ones are using a very similar um, set of alphas to drive the effect. But this one gives you a more surface noise and more details to, to explore. This one is a little bit cleaner. So if I click on that one, um, let me just show you. This one will be the equivalent of creating dimples like these ones here, or um, the ones that have like this fur or this hair coming out of it that are a little bit more bumpy, like these ones right here, that they have like this, this hair coming out of it. Um, this one right here is the, the pattern that I was trying to mention earlier, the false. Going back to what I was saying, so these ones uh, would be really cool, let's say, in this area. If I select this and then just press harder to create these pores in this fashion, and then I can add uh, maybe some, you know, fiber mesh or or literally just sculpt or add some lines for the hair coming out of these regions, right? Um, obviously, you can use it anywhere. Let's enable symmetry, right? And then once you apply this with a bit of the smooth brush, it works really well. That's another really really cool brush. Uh, I would say one of the essential of this pack. Um, and the same way you can use the thick bumpy pores, maybe in an area like this, just to, to show you. Um, it has the same effect, but maybe let's do it in this surface. It gives you a cleaner set of bumps that follow an area. It kind of like works uh, well in combination with the previous one, where you don't want to have like these massive holes. You see, you can use both and then this one um, will add the massive pores, whereas the other one just gives you a suggestion of them. So undo all of that, and then let's go ahead and use that bumpy pores in here so that we can add a bit more surface noise. Uh, but yeah, that's how easily you can add details to your insect models. I don't know how many of you are interested in doing insects. I know sometimes I build these uh, brushes packs and they're too specific, but that's the reason why I create this, this brushes pack. I need them at some point in a project and then I just make them available and I think um, you guys can do really cool stuff with them. All right, so just to cover a couple more and to wrap it up, I have this uh, subtle camo, like a, as in camouflage. Um, so if I use that here, it basically creates this pattern that you can go over. You can apply it in a similar way as the uh, labyrinth skin. So you can go over the same area multiple times and then just smooth everything out. And it creates a very, very cool pattern once it's smoothed out. And you see a very simple, very easy way of creating something interesting and you can obviously go back and tweak it manually. Um, all right, maybe we can add a bit of that pattern here. Again, uh, I want to reiterate the fact that I'm overdoing the amount of details just because I want to uh, showcase most of the brushes. So I will be a little bit more thorough if this was something that, um, you know, that I want to work on and put in my portfolio or something like that. So you shouldn't have details like this everywhere. Or if you're following a reference that has to have those details there uh, in order to resemble the reality of that uh, reference, uh, just pay attention on the balance because it's not the same size or it's not the same amount of details everywhere. Now, a couple more brushes just to wrap it up. Um, this hexagonal trimmer, if you use it on a, on a surface like this, uh, it's boring. It just trims things with this hexagonal shape. Um, you can press the Alt key and invert it and create this sort of like extra pattern, but it's weird. So uh, I just want to mention that one because it's a brush that I would use once I have a bunch of details like this, right? So I would use it here to sort of like trim the area without pressing too hard and then smooth this out. So it has that hexagonal pattern, but the intention is not to create that hexagonal a pattern at all. So if I'm polishing this for whatever reason, I'll just go with the polishing brush and it just flattens the, the surface a little bit and removes the details in a way. That's the intention of this brush. 
but it leaves this hexagonal pattern in there. And you can hold the Shift key again, and then when you smooth it out, it's not going to be completely flat. That was the, the original intention of this brush. Um, you know, it might take a while to, to get used to why it works that way, but don't expect it to uh, create that pattern for you. And that's it, right? If you want to create a similar pattern, though, um, you can use, um, this one is also very similar, but you can go over the same area. So if I want to create some kind of ice pattern as well like that, you can do that brush, or you can press the Alt key and create uh, sort of like an eye pattern with, um, with more control. And when I say control, I mean that you can, you know, do it in any, with any pressure you want and in any direction uh, and just, yeah, go over the same area a few times. So this one is really cool and it has those two functions. I left the, the default one to be subtracting like this because I think it's a, it's a good, um, it's a good brush to combine with um, other patterns, especially when you go over the same area like so, and then smooth everything out. Just remember that everything in this pack was intended to work with a smooth peak brush um, that comes with ZBrush. And that's why they, they look slightly different from the, the actual pattern that produce with the first go, if you will. Let's go back to a couple more. So I have these spiky edges. I'm just gonna show you that one. Uh, that basically does what the, what the name says. It just creates these spiky edges, which could be really good for, let's say if you're doing um, a, an insect leg, Let's assume that this antenna is an insect leg. Let me go into solo mode. And I'm also going to lock my camera so that I can do this easily. All right. So yeah, you can go with this and create these sort of ridges. Um, and of course, you can go back with a move brush and also pull things a bit more if you wanted to. That's actually not too bad for the antenna. I'm just going to smooth this out a little bit. Um, but yeah, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, again, it's a, it's a brush that you can tweak as much as you want to, to create other type of patterns. So if I increase the intensity from 32 to 57, it's gonna be really, really prominent, but then I can press harder or softer with my brush to create this you know, manual pattern really easily. That looks pretty cool, right? Um, alternatively, you can hold the Alt key and then push things in, and that would also add a set of lines with a, with a dimple or a crater that is pretty strong. Um, however, for something more like that, if you want to just create a kind of like cracks or lines, cuts in this insect, this insect liner is much better. So let's say if I want to divide this panel and I want to make this section an actual panel, I can just go like this. It's similar to the standard brush, or not the standard, sorry, the dam standard that it cuts into the model, right? So that sort of opens up a new set of possibilities. But the cool thing is that I'm going to do it in here so you can see the effect. The cool thing is that as you go through, it adds these bumps or, or extra dimples. So it also creates a similar pattern to the one that I created here in this area, but, you know, more manually. So you can just refine some of these lines just to sharpen them up without, you know, compromising the, the cool details that you had beforehand. A couple of cool ways of adding manual details as well. All right. And to wrap it up, let's use the... Line noise cuts short. Uh, actually, this one is also, <laughs> some of them are very specific. So let's use this one first. And this would create these noisy pattern lines really quickly, right? Uh, but those lines, when you use the, the smooth peaks brush, just to clean it up a little bit, it will look like some stretched pores as well, or uh, the equivalent of pores. I know those are not necessarily pores in the insects, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, yeah, so this one is really cool. And then we have these uh, ridges strong. I did this one for a specific purpose as well. So if you're doing something like a scarab or um, let me just show you a bug like, like this. So if you pay attention to the one here at the back, well, not this one in particular, but this type of ridges, if you want to go a bit stronger with extra ridges at the back, um, yeah, I might not have the reference here that I use for this one, but you know, it creates a nice pattern. So let me just show you what it does. Right, so it just creates that pattern. Um, if you do it slowly, and this is the reason I want to show you or cover these brushes, because sometimes it's about how you apply them and not necessarily the pattern. So if I go really fast, it just builds almost like the, the effect of the ice, you know, fly, for example. That's doing it really, really fast. If I go really slow, it's going to create the ridges while also keeping a nice set of, you know, details of patterns 
in between the ridges. So I'm just doing this very, very slowly. And it also deforms the surface slightly as well. All right. So it creates those ridges and then you can go with a smooth brush again and soften things up. And if you go closer, you see it has this nice sort of combination or uh, blending of the lines. So you can definitely tell that they are lines and it has a specific flow, but it also comes with that nice set of patterns or uh, extra details that it connects or blends the line. So it's not, it's not a straight line that you do with the, you know, you can do the same thing with the standard brush, right? It already has a, a connecting tissue, if you want, um, between the lines. So um, this one is really cool for that specific thing. Um, and then finally, I have to show you more stuff. So brainy stuff, <laughs> it just creates this brainy stuff. This one is super simple. It just has a cool alpha. Once you apply this, you can again go with a smooth brush. Let's smooth everything out. And it just creates this sort of like brainy surface, right? So that's it. Pretty simple. There is another one that I want to show you, which is these two. All right. So the quick eye pattern and the tiny row. So this quick eye pattern is to create the, you know, the pattern of the eye. I uh, just named it quick eye pattern because it's not perfect, but it just allows you to do a quick pattern if you want to just uh, test things out and of course you can you know smooth it out afterwards but you know the pattern in the in the eyes of insects is much more um, regular than this uh, so I usually use surface noise for this this is just a quick way of generating uh, something just to check that it works in terms of the of the scale I can just go with a larger brush and do that and test and see you know maybe I need something smaller uh, but if you spend some time with this brush uh, like cleaning it up after you create this, it also creates a nice set of bumpy areas. You can use it in, in many different ways. Um, the same brush or the same effect. So I just want to mention that one. And this is to wrap it up. I'm going to use the tiny growths. The tiny growths, if I go to the alpha, you see it's just a tiny little dimple that creates some growth. So I'm just going to use this area. And I'm pressing, you know, in certain areas harder and softer. Um, and of course, go with the smooth brush and clean this up. Now, this doesn't look great uh, or like what I'm intended with this brush, but I'm going to show you something else. So with this brush, it uses the, if I go to the stroke palette, it uses the color spray. Uh, you can switch it to the spray. It doesn't make a difference. I'm not using any color, but you can adjust things in the modifiers uh, like the placement and the scale and the flow. So you can change this uh, with this brush. So if I change the placement to be zero and I go over here, you'll see this creates this weird looking effect that is pushing things really, really hard. Obviously, it's distorting the geometry quite a bit, but you know, you could do this with Dynamesh and then redynamesh and maybe uh, retopologize this and get something going that looks pretty cool. If I go to one, then the, the effect or the dimples are gonna be spread apart a lot more. So that's when um, you can see that the, the growth uh, bits are starting to pop in and they're not even, right? So this one right here is, you know, different than the one right here. And that is just because of the spacing. That's another cool way of doing it. Uh, obviously, you can control the size of the brush and then with the smooth brush, just clean things up. Um, the other thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to reset my current brush to the full settings of this specific brush. Um, but let's say the placement to 0.5 in the stroke palette. So something like this. So I'm going to just do this. And instead of using the, the smooth brush that I've been using, what I want to do is actually maintain the larger bumps, right? So what you can do is go to the brush palette. Let's filter by the letter S and then go with the smooth valleys. So the smooth peaks is the one that I've used, uh, that I've been using this whole tutorial. And the smooth valleys is the one that produces an inverted effect. So it's going to respect, you know, the high points, right? So this is the one that I would use to smooth things out and leave the bumpy growths, or, or I don't know how <laughs> this one would be, but it just cleans things up. It's just the inverter effect, right? And that's it. If I undo, I'm just gonna undo this just to show you the difference between this is after going through with the smooth valleys, and this is before. So you can see the pattern a lot, um, a lot more. So before, after. Um, anyway, so that should cover it. I'm going to go ahead and show you as a as a final extra tip to wrap up this tutorial, how to create the effect for the, the hexagonal pattern of the eyes. So I'm going to select the eyes and I'm going to go to, first of all, let me go into solo mode, making sure I have polygroups. I just made some random quick polygroups um, so that I can split it. And the idea of these two polygroups is that the yellow one, this yellow polygroup is hidden by the rest of the mesh. 
And then I'm going to the C plugin palette. Uh, UV master, make sure that symmetry is on as well as polygroups. Click on unwrap. That unwraps this. And then we can go to the high subdivision level. And now with the eye selected, I'm going to go to the surface noise. Click on noise. And we have the noise already. Uh, but we have UV, so I'm going to click on UVs. That plays or uh, wraps the noise based on the UVs, not in the 3D camera. And I'm going to click on noise plug. That will bring in this extra window and in here I'm just going to select this hex tile right and then you can tweak the parameters and all the settings in here I'm just going to select hex tile click OK and let's go ahead and tweak this a little bit you can sort of see the pattern in there first thing I'm going to do is reduce the mix basic noise so it's only the pattern from the plugin and I'm going to scale that plugin down a bit and of course increase the intensity it doesn't matter you can do it this way like positive or negatively this is not going to impact what I'm going to show you next um, let's go ahead and change the scale. I think this is a re reasonably good scale. Let's click OK. And once you do that, you'll see it's applied or not applied, but um, you can visually see the noise. You can turn it on and off. Um, so this is not actual, there's no sculpted details yet. Uh, so if I go ahead and go to the to the, a low subdivision level like this, right? This is the lowest subdivision level of the eyes. If I click noise, you can still see it. But if I were to apply it, click on it, you see nothing happens or barely anything happens because it's trying to apply that amount of detail into a surface that doesn't have that much. So I will have to apply it in the highest subdivision level. However, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to take advantage of this pattern and create a mask for it so that I have more control over um, how I distribute it or how I um, create the details really. So I'm going to click on mask by noise. And that's it. So if I go into solo mode, you'll see that created that mask. It's not perfect. I mean, it's perfect, but it's not like super clear or sharp because of the amount of resolution. But I don't need more than that, right? Um, it creates this nice mask that I can just go ahead and go to the masking palette, invert it, right? And then I can blur it. And then we can invert it back again. And then we can use something from the deformation palette like inflating it. So I'm just going to inflate that. So zero is going to inflate that surface, but it's going to keep, uh, hang on. Let me just do it again. That's an important concept to get right. So Zbrush is protecting those um, those areas, that pattern. And with Inflate, it's just pushing that pattern along the normals of the polygon. So I'm going to let go there. And you have you know something going that looks pretty cool. If you want to tighten everything in this before you clear the mask, you can do an Inflate once again. Now, the, the important thing to keep in mind is that the Inflate slider will push things based on their normals. So if I push again, now we have a slightly different set of normals and it's going to tighten everything up like that. And then we can just clear the mask and we have our insect almost um, ready to go. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. These are the brushes. Some of them I didn't cover, uh, I think most of them actually. This one I didn't cover is just uh, rakes. This one is to create sort of like the effect of fur. But, you know, the fun thing about these brushes is that you can play around with them, but I think I cover most of them anyway. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Hopefully you have found it useful. Uh, let me know what you think about the brushes in the comments. And of course, if you, if you get the pack and create something cool with it, feel free to uh, tag me in and I would love to see what you're making with this, uh, this new set of resources. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.